Welcome to the complete web development roadmap for beginners presented by dev.code. In this video, I will give you the roadmap to become a web developer in no time. And I will also provide you top resources that you can study. So follow along and never miss a slide. To fully absorb this presentation, grab a notepad and take some notes. In this roadmap, we will be tackling about the basics of web development, to how the internet works, what languages do you need to study or start with, and we are also going to have a deep dive session with libraries and frameworks in front-end development. And last but not the least is the introduction to back-end development. First on our list is web development. In this section, you need to know what is web development, what is the difference of front-end and back-end development, and you also need to learn what is the difference between dynamic and static sites. Don't worry if you don't know anything about those topics because I will be giving you resources to study, like this links from Geeks for Geeks for web development, front-end versus back-end, and static versus dynamic website. Second on our list is understanding the basics. In this basics, we need to know how does the internet works, and second, where do we start? And to answer that question, here are the things that you need to know before moving into web development. First is HTML, second is CSS, and third is JavaScript. First on the three is HTML. So what should you know about HTML? You need to learn the basics like elements, attributes, headings, paragraphs, links, or lists. Second, you need to know how to incorporate media like images, videos, and audio into your web application. And third one is how to incorporate forms and inputs into your application. Now that you know about those things, you can move on into CSS. For CSS, you need to learn the basics like selectors, properties, and values. Second, is you need to learn one or at least one layout like flexbox or grid layout. Third one, you must be knowledgeable of responsive design. So you need to learn about media queries and the mobile first approach in web development. And lastly, you need to learn at least one CSS preprocessors like SAS or less. Now that you have knowledge for this about CSS, you can now move on into what we call as JavaScript. In JavaScript, you just need to learn these things. You need to learn about variables, data types, functions, or events. Second is DOM manipulation. Third is some asynchronous JavaScript like Promises, Ajax, and Fetch API. And fourth one is you need to learn the ES6 Plus features for the resources, you can learn those three in these links like W3Schools, Web.dev, and also learn JavaScript.online. And for the ESX features, you can check out this link. Now that we are done with that, we can now dive deeper into front-end development. First things first, you need to focus on your JavaScript. Second, you need to distinguish how does a library differs from a framework. And the third one, you need to learn at least one. So what are these so-called libraries and frameworks? So once you have enough knowledge about those three things, <clears throat> first, you need to focus on JavaScript. Second, you need to differentiate how a library differs from a framework. And the third one, you need to learn at least one. Once you have enough knowledge about those three things, it's time to learn a UI library or a framework. 
And here are some of the popular JS libraries and frameworks that you can use in web development. For the top ones, I chose React, Vue, and Angular to recommend for beginners. I also have honorable mentions like Svelte, React, and SolidJS which you can check out if you want to. For React, you can go to react.dev for the documentation. For Vue, we have viewjs.org, and for Angular, we have angular.io. So keep in mind that you just need to master just one. Once you've mastered at least one of this library or framework, you can now move on into another scripting language, which is TypeScript. So you have to learn TypeScript at all costs. So you can go to typescriptlang.org to learn it now. Next is one of the most forgotten aspects of web development, and that is what you call web design. In web design, you need to learn the UI or user interface and user experience design principles. You must learn a design tool like Figma or Adobe XD. And lastly, you need to learn a CSS framework or a UI library to make things or development much easier and faster. So for resource, you can check this LinkedIn article for basics of UX or UI design principles. Now we move on in learning a CSS UI library or framework. And what are those that I can recommend to a beginner? So it can be Bootstrap, MUI or Material UI, and lastly, Tailwind CSS. So if you know at least one of these three, you are good to go. Next topic is web optimization. So after our web design principles, we need to optimize our web applications. You need to know how to implement lazy loading into your web applications. Second, how to minify or minification and bundling of your application. And third is image and video optimization for much faster loads in your website. Now that we are done with the front end part of web development, it is now time to check the other side. And what is on the other side? It's no other than back-end development. So what should you know about back-end development? So you need to learn about the basic server components. Next up, you can learn a language or a framework that you want for back-end development. Third is you need to learn, of course, databases. Fourth is authorization and authentication. And lastly, that I think is what is important, you need to understand how does an API work and how to create one. So for basic server components, number one, you need to learn how to host a website. Second, you need to learn about servers. Third is databases. For languages and frameworks, here are the things that I can recommend to a beginner like you. So you can learn about Node.js since you have learned JavaScript Previously in front-end development, this will be a seamless transition from front-end to back-end if you learn Node.js. Second is Express. It's also a framework for Node.js that you can do or make use of for back-end development. Third is the popular Java that we all know. Fourth one, we have C Sharp. And lastly, for being a beginner-friendly which I really recommend that you start of learning programming, that is Python. Now we move on to the types of databases. So what types of databases you need to learn? So you need to learn about NoSQL and SQL. For SQL, we have PostgreSQL and MySQL. So choose a database that suits your web applications but for beginners i would recommend to start with my sql moving on to our no sql databases we have mongodb and firebase so you can try firebase real-time database or the firestore one 
So I recommend that you can start with this MongoDB to learn about NoSQL first and maybe move on into Firebase implementation. Next up is authentication and authorization. So what do you need to learn? You need to learn about session and cookies. Second is JWT or our JSON web token for authorization and authentication. And the third one is the industry standard, which is OAuth. For the resources, you can try to check out jwt.io, oauth.net, and this Geeks for Geeks links about the difference between session and cookies. Moving on into our presentation is the application programming interface. So you can learn about REST or REST APIs, SOAP, and also Webhook. So there are many different kinds of APIs, so you can search them on the web, but the most popular ones are this, like on REST, SOAP, and Webhooks. Now that you've learned about those APIs, you can move into this next topic, which is one of the most important tool that every developer out there needs. And that is version control. For version control, you can check out Git, SVN, or Mercurial, but for modern developers, try to check out Git. Once you're doing front-end development, you will need the help of a package manager. So on our next slide, we will be talking about package managers. For package managers that manages our dependencies in front-end development, um, one of the most popular one is called NPM. Second is Yarn. And the rising one is PNPM, which is much more faster than NPM. With these libraries, frameworks, and tools, you will also need an IDE or an integrated development environment. So here are the ones that I can recommend for a beginner like you. So you will never go wrong with VS Code, Brackets, and Sublime Text. I am really glad that you make it till this part. Once you have accomplished this roadmap, you will be ready to develop your own website or applications. The next step for you is to create web applications that you can write or that you can include in your portfolio. So thank you for watching. I hope you like, subscribe, and follow dev.code now. So comment if you want this slide in our YouTube comment section or you can tag me at any post on Facebook or TikTok if you want this slide. So I hope you can share this as well with your classmates and friends. See you on the next video.